And finally, new rule. Now that the Trump phenomenon seems to have peaked, Americans must ask themselves, why? Why for so long was there one set of rules for everyone who's ever run for president and then suddenly a completely new set for this Donald Trump person? Because when it comes to lowering the bar, he really raised the bar. <laughs> So, it's been a year and a day since Donald Trump descended on an escalator to announce he was running for president, and since then, he's just kept on descending. <laughs> so let me take you back in time to the pre-Trump era and show you what people used to think was a monstrous political gaffe. Here's Al Gore and Bush the first, each doing something at a debate that the country found to be beyond the pale. There's differences. We have a question right here. Yes, how has the national debt... Shocking, isn't it? <laughs> Sighing and looking at your watch to show such blatant disrespect for our sacred democracy. <laughs> then there's this guy at a debate, bragging about his dick. He referred to my hands. If they're small, something else must be small. I guarantee you there's no problem. I guarantee it. <laughs> What if Bush had done that? Read my lips, six and a half inches. <laughs> or take the sensitive issue of race. There was a firestorm back in 92 when Ross Perot said to a black audience... Now, I don't have to tell you who gets hurt first when this sort of thing happens, do I? You, you people do. <laughs> oh, my God, he said you people! smother him with the AIDS quilt. <laughs> George Allen was a rising star in 2006, and then his career was over when he said... This fellow here over here with the, the yellow shirt, Makaka, or whatever his name is. Did you hear it? Did you hear it, everybody? He said Makaka. <laughs> whatever the fuck that is. <laughs> Trump tweets more racist shit than that before lunch. He retweets white supremacy. He began his campaign by calling an entire minority group rapists. He says our black president faked his birth and might be working with ISIS. He did this. Oh, look at my African-American oh, over here. Look at him. That's not worse than you people? <laughs> and what about basic old dumbness? I, I seem to remember Dan Quayle being pronounced unfit for office dumb because he misspelled potato. And Sarah Palin's brief flirtation with respectability came crashing down when she could not name what news sources she read. All of them, any of them that um, have, have been in front of me over all these years. But Trump doesn't even pretend he can read. He just hears things. I'm hearing. A lot of people are saying. <laughs> this is his favorite news so He hears things. <laughs> it could be from a passing mental patient. It could be the voices in his own head. And when he does... When he does read, it's the National Enquirer. And he refers to it as the paper. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, I'm not being fair. He does have one other news source. All I know is what's on the Internet. <laughs> right, me too. I get my news from Pornhub. No wonder he once said, I love the poorly educated. <laughs> John McCain and Bob Dole, both veterans, but war does things to a man. Both were accused of being too angry. Too angry to be president. After all, Bob Dole once said this. And Senator Dole, is there anything you'd like to say to the vice president? Yeah, stop lying about my record. Ah! <laughs> what a raving lunatic! <laughs> but this is okay. Uh, I don't know what I said. Uh, I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, what about that? 
Obama once just compared his poor bowling skills to the Special Olympics, cut to the apology tour, but we're good with this. Uh, I don't know what I said, uh. And finally, the ultimate third rail, insulting the military. Obama got endless shit for once saluting with coffee in his hand, violating an ancient military rule dating to never. <laughs> <laughs> But Trump can say John McCain isn't a war hero? If Hillary said that, they'd be burning pantsuits in effigy. <laughs> All right, thanks for our show. Don't forget to watch our convention coverage in July, three nights. I want to thank my guests, Colonel Lawrence Wilkinson, Emily Miller, Josh Farrow, and Fre thank you. Remy Patel, <laughs> and Rebecca Tracer. Join us now for overtime.